हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी धनवत प्रणाम माता जी धनवत प्रणाम हाउ आर यू डूइंग गुड प्रभु जी थैंक यू प्रभु जी हाउ आर यू प्रभु जी या वी आर डूइंग गुड आफ्टर लॉन्ग टाइम यस प्रभु जी एक्चुअली आई हैव बीन सीइंग ऑल द फोटोज दैट यू वर सेंडिंग एक्चुअली इट वाज रियली नाइस टू नाइस टू हैव दर्शन प्रभु जी इट वाज रियली वी आल्सो फेल्ट दैट यू नो वी वी आर देयर एक्चुअली अ पार्ट ऑफ इट सो इट वाज रियली नाइस प्रभु जी थैंक यू प्रभु जी फॉर दैट डाउनफॉल अगेन आई uh current state is around 6 uh, uh, rounds only prabhu ji again i fell down completely actually after after uh, uh like you know after uh, we stopped this bhakti uh, like you know we paused this i it's completely down prabhu ji somehow uh, it was really difficult for me i brought uh, uh, bal gopal also to home i'm trying to um, give him bath every time i'm telling him like you know bal gopal i'm not able to Uh, focus on chanting uh, i was like you know, i was hoping okay my prabhu, prabhu ji will come now and uh, i listen to prabhu ji then probably he'll get some more uh, positive vibrations don't worry mata ji try to come back again yeah yes prabhu ji okay that's don't take much anxiety how many were you doing before we left for india um prabhu ji i went almost to 16 prabhu ji 12 to 16 rounds i was doing Mm-hmm. I was uh, from twelve. Like I, I was uh, consistent at twelve. Sometimes sixteen. Sometimes mm-hmm. uh, only twelve. I used to do, but it was uh, really nice for me to go till there. Uh, thought I'll continue, but I don't know what happened in between. Uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, mm-hmm. again chaos and yeah. Mm-hmm. Just uh, I just came down. Well, maybe start with six and gradually try to come back to your old state of twelve. I would say. Yeah. Don't worry. All right. Yeah. Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhuji. Welcome. Amol Prabhu, Dandrat Pranam, Sare Krishna. Dandrat Pranam, Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji. How is the new temple coming along? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, are you regularly going Sundays? Yeah, we are going on Sundays, and in between also we go because it's very near to our house. So in the afternoon also weekdays we go. Do you have some services over there? Ah, uh, no, Prabhu Ji, not yet. Yeah, maybe you can aspire. Yeah, yeah, I will plan to join the Sunday services. Yeah, any service once a week, maybe one hour a week or one two hours, yeah. something yeah. small. Yeah, Prabhu. Your chanting is going well. Yeah, chanting is going well. Consistent. Yeah, consistent. Yeah, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah. Yeah. Padmavati Mata Ji, how you are doing? Hari Krishna, Prabhu Ji, Namo Pranam, Prabhu Ji. Namo Pranam. doing well doing uh, well prabhu ji but uh, chanting letting me disturbance from the how and many rounds ah uh, 16 rounds only prabhu ji you mean quality wise ah uh, yes prabhu ji quality wise hmm. uh, this purushottam as i decided to do 20 rounds i am doing i am completing prabhu ji but uh, i am not satisfied prabhu ji may we'll talk again on this subject matter your your husband is back no prabhu ji he is there only prabhu ji in See, canada ah in, uh, in canada hmm. well our all of our experience with chanting is many times it goes up and down there are many many factors that affect it but if we try your best to focus and just don't give up the fighting part don't give up don't give up like it's okay it's not happening so let me just try to 
complete it if you don't get into that mood but even in whatever the situation of our mind is if you try your best to focus especially mm -hmm. if you are alone and if it's a early morning hours and if you keep on trying your best to focus offering prayers helps offering prayers to either whatever is attractive to you any particular form of the lord maybe an associate of the lord like uh, balram or shrimati radharani any aspect of dham like govardhan yamuna or tulasi wherever you feel some kind of connection um, uh, please help me this okay. and then just keep keep trying keep trying whatever things that make our chanting get affected those things are quickly resolved many times we don't understand the reason and krishna understands but many times it's not revealed to us but krishna from the background can take care of many things without even to our notice as long as we keep trying to shelter of it okay prabhu ji and if you are aware of anybody unhappy with you for whatever reason you can try to repair that relationship okay prabhu ji Shrinivas Prabhu is consistent with his chanting? No, Prabhu Ji. He is also not able to focus, actually. Uh, actually, there is no association. But every Sunday, he goes to temple, Prabhu Ji. Nearest temple is? Uh, um, Vancouver, some place is there, Prabhu Ji. I don't mm -hmm. remember. I mean, if we have once a week association, that is good. Um, rest is our own, our own determination, our own sadhana. And I mean, for many of us, we get some association from reading and some from hearing. Okay. Hmm. Okay, Prabhuji. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Prabhuji. Praveena Mata, you wanted to say something? I saw you unmuted. Uh, no, Prabhuji. I was just thinking, yeah, maybe whatever Padma Mataji was selling, same thing holds good to me also because, you know, we don't have association here. Um, maybe that is affecting us every time, like, you know, we want to uh, improve on our uh, this thing. Also, you mentioned if somebody is unhappy with you, try to um, mm. fix that. So pro probably these two are points which I have to keep in mind. So I just, mm. uh, yeah. And Mataji, I have seen, I mean, our chanting will go, sometime we will feel absorbed and sometime we will struggle. That is an unavoidable part of our Krishna consciousness. Probably. But we try our best to... Um, like this continue in our struggle phase also. Mm. Like just we just try our best and we try to try to come back, try to come back. Okay, it's okay. No, no worries. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> just keep trying yeah. other that's all. That's okay. Yeah, from Okay, so I don't know. Uh, Sukumari Mataji, are others joining? Do we wait? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dhanakranajji. I sent message. Uh, should we start? As you wish, Prabhuji. Yeah, okay. Om Agyanti Mirandhasya Gyananjana Shalatayam Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasman Shri Guru Vena Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamaya Dadati Swa Padantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutapata Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sadrajatam Sahagana Ragunathan Ritam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam 
श्री राधा कृष्ण पादान सहगण ललिता श्री विशाखा वितमश हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगत प्रत्ये गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमस्ते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुखदेवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंशकल्प तरुभ्य कृपा सिंधु पतिता पावन वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैता गदाधर श्री वासादी गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे मुखम करोति वाचाल पंगुम लंगाय ते गिरि यदा तमहम वंदे श्री गुरु दीन तारिणम परमानंद माधव श्री चैतन्य नम ओं विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामने नमस्ते सारस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे ओके सो वी आर बिगनिंग अवर फोर्टीन चैप्टर सो फार फर्स्ट थर्टीन चैप्टर कवर्स द सिक्सटी फोर अंगा सिक्सटी फोर लिम्स ऑफ डिवोशनल सर्विस भक्ति योगा देन रूप गोस्वामी पाद डिस्क्राइब्स द फाइव मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ डिवोशनल सर्विस दैट कैन हेल्प अस और दैट गारंटीज वेरी क्विक ग्रोथ इन अवर कृष्ण कॉन्शियसनेस those five are chanting the holy names of krishna reading shrimad bhagavatam associating with devotees of the lord visiting holy places and worshiping the deities it is said that if we can do these five things on a regular basis that will speed up our growth in our krishna consciousness and we discussed little bit more in detail in past like you know when we just before we left we finished those five topics we have heard a lot about the glories of chanting the holy names of krishna as the yoga dharma the most important aspects the most important ang of devotional service most of our progress is based on our chanting other angas of devotional service is basically to help us become absorbed in our chanting chanting must be done while avoiding as much as possible while avoiding the 10 offenses among those 10 offenses one very thing something that really affects our chanting is um sadhu ninda or criticizing a devotee um shivram maharaj he mentions uh, sometime we pass a comment that may hurt somebody slip of a tongue sometime one word is sufficient to affect our chanting so it becomes very helpful if we um that's why rupa goswami says in the first verse of nectar of instruction he says watch your wake up controlling the urge to speak that really helps in um maintaining our krishna consciousness so this is about chanting some quick something quick then shrimad bhagavatam shrimad bhagavatam is the best among all the vedic scriptures it speaks about the past times of krishna the life of krishna and also speaks about the glories of krishna's devotees shrimad bhagavatam is full of very lively instructions that help us fare through or go through our krishna consciousness in a smooth way shrimad bhagavatam brings us to reality because it is very easy to become distracted in this material world because the material energy is very very powerful and one may be attracted with many many desires but shrimad bhagavatam bring back our true eternal identity as being having an eternal relationship with the lord and life being temporary the human life can be focused on maintaining and revitalizing or reawakening our lost relationship with lord krishna which is an eternal relationship we also hear from chitana charitamrita which says um um nitya siddha krishna prema sadhya kabuno shavana adi shuddhi chitte karo yoto that the love of krishna is within the heart of all living entities it is lying there in a dormant state 
it has to be reawakened and that reawakening can happen by the simple process of hearing and chanting the glories of the lord and the names of the lord in chanting the most important aspect of chanting is to hear we try our best every word we speak we use our ears and we let the vibration go into our ears and then by the time we vibrate the next word hare let it go krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare we try to hear we focus on hearing the names of the lord and if by focused hearing any other form of remembrance comes then those are very much welcomed but our focus is on we should be able to hear the mantra there is chanting there is reading shrimad bhagavatam um, every day um, then there is association of devotees association of devotees help us to um, um, understand um, the vedic principles um, association is not just for knowledge association is something um by association we develop the bhav develop the mood develop the devotion develop the qualities everything that comes along with the association also giving a bad habits all, all the various various benefits that comes by associate, associating with devotees <clears throat> and then there is worship of deities bringing deities at home makes our life krishna conscious makes our life regulated um like uh, i know one family like uh, one of the one of the devotees from here they went to to vrindavan yatra with us so they gave their deities to another family and i was talking to them i asked so prabhu what is your experience having deities in your home and that family they were speaking about the realization and they said we became very much attached to these deities now we want our own deities uh, when they are here the life became very much regulated we are cooking more carefully we are careful about they are hungry we now we know that we have to get home early so that we can put them to rest in the morning we have to wake them up so it is very natural for us to become absorbed in krishna on a very advanced stage we can easily become absorbed on krishna as he is performing his various uh, uh, past times various activities in spiritual but on a advanced platform one can remember there on on that platform but since um most of us are um like you know we are not at that stage of pure devotees like shri prabhupad for us these deities helps us to remember krishna because okay i have to feed them now ekadashi is coming i have to bathe them on ekadashi now i have to put them to rest now i have to wake them up now to do one aarati to them um, is this food offered to krishna so we don't even know unconsciously we become way way more krishna conscious by having the deities at home also worshiping the deities is a very very um, special time uh, that gives lot of blessings um, it is said like one time sachinder mara says just by darshan of a deity um, from the lotus feet of the deity there is a saffron dust that emanates that enter our hearts and immediately makes us feel devotional uh, so very helpful to regulate our life and keep us centered and absorbed in thinking about krishna we become careful about many many aspects of krishna like uh, is krishna cold is krishna warm um, um is the lights off like you know small small nitty gritty things but they just make us centered around krishna um and then um the last is visiting holy places visiting holy places by visiting holy places we take many many vibrations of the holy place we take many impressions we see the physical form of govardhan of yamuna of vrindavan uh, of the streets in vrindavan of the various temples um we take all those impressions within our heart and then when we visit and when we come back then we can meditate on them we can take shelter of them we can offer prayers to them so in that way we visiting holy places is like at that point of time when we are there we may be very tired exhausted uh, very hot we may go through many austerities but then austerities are good to actually do dham yatra 
But then after we have absorbed everything, we come back and then they become our asset. Um, um, Rupa Goswami says these five things, they are most powerful in making quick progress. Srila Prabhupada also mentions once in a year, we should go to holy dhams to recharge our batteries. Um, take a break. I saw when I was in Mayapur, um, no, Eka Chakra. There were 30 brahmacharis. They came from one of the temple in India. So I asked them, they said, yeah, all of us Prabhu came here and we are just on a break on a holy dham visit. So it's like um, um, recharging ourselves with the potency of the dham. So these five, and then Shri Prabhupada also says for those who cannot go very frequently to the holy dham worshipping Tulsi at home, because Tulsi is an associate of the Lord and Tulsi is one who makes arrangement for all the activities of Vrindavan. And when Tulsi comes, um, Krishna is also there because Tulsi never leaves Vrindavan. So wherever Tulsi is, that place becomes Vrindavan. And that also becomes Dham. Uh, that's why we all should worship Tulsi in our homes and take shelter of Tulsi. There is a wonderful pastime where uh, there were prominent deities that those were carved by carved or found by virgin of the grandson of Krishna. They were in Vrindavan. Over a period of time, those deities were lost or they disappeared from the common vision. Later on, under guidance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami and others, those uh, um, lost deities, original lost deities, which were carved or excavated by Varjana, they were found. And because of the attack by Aurangzeb, after the departure of the Goswamis, these deities were uh, being taken to um, um, a Jaipur for protection because the Muslims were led by Aurangzeb. They were attacking all the Hindu temples. So at that point of time, Vrinda Devi spoke uh, uh, to the Pujari who was about to take Vrinda Devi also to Jaipur. Vrinda Devi said, if I leave Vrindavan, what will people say? I am the in charge of Vrindavan. How can I leave Vrindavan? I cannot go. No matter what happens, I cannot leave. What will others say? That Vrinda Devi left her own forest. I have to stay here. So Vrinda Devi is the in charge of Vrindavan. Uh, she orchestrates all the activities of Golo Vrindavan. So wherever she is, she is working from there. She makes that place. She is a very, she is an eternal associate of the Lord. Uh, my spiritual master says uh, there is only two pure devotees in the temple. And he said, he was telling about Chopati. And he says, you know, there are only two pure devotees in our temple. And he said, one is Tulasi Devi and one is Srila uh, uh, Prabhupada in his deity form. Um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also says, the perfect environment to chant the holy name of Krishna is just have Tulasi by your side. Because she creates, you know, like when pure devotees, wherever they go, they make their place in Dhaman. What is Tulsi Devi thinking? Tulsi Devi heart is Vrindavan. Tulsi Devi is the in charge of Vrindavan. What to speak about? She is not a pure devotee. She is the leader of pure devotees. She assigns services to all the pure devotees. So she has a very, very special position. And wherever she is, the whole air, the whole environment becomes purified. Uh, Padma Puran, other scripture says, by touching the dust in which Tulasi is growing by touching that, all the sins are removed. Either by circumambulating her, by watering her, by seeing her, by being around her, everything, if it connects to Tulasi, becomes so pure beyond imagination. So, Prabhupada says, worship, worship Tulasi. So, after describing the 64 items of devotional service, Rupa Goswami says, these five specially fo focus on them. Every day read Bhagavatam, every day chant the name of Krishna, every day associate with devotees, every day do some sort, sort of um, deity worship and take care of Tulsi at your home. This is a perfect Krishna conscious package. If you have these five things in your home, rest assured you will be safe. Sometime like some of the devotees were mentioning, if there is difficulty in chanting, take shelter of hearing. If you like any like spiritual master in his con, Srila Prabhupada lectures are very, very heart-touching. 
I asked one devotee, are you aspiring from somebody yet? He said, Prabhu, I only love Prabhupada lectures. I said, yes, that's sufficient, Prabhu. By, by hearing Prabhupada lecture, Prabhupada will reveal to your spiritual master also. Keep hearing Prabhupada lectures. So some form of association, shelter of Bhagavatam, shelter of hearing will give us motivation, will give us inspiration to continue. So these were the five vangas of most important five vangas of devotional service. Now we are coming 13th chapter ended with five most important forms of devotional service. Now this 14th chapter is very interesting. 14th chapter Rupa Goswami describes what are not the anga of bhakti. Sometimes we may think renunciation is bhakti, self-control is bhakti, karma is bhakti, knowledge is bhakti. And we may have many understanding of what is bhakti. But none of these items Rupa Goswami includes in his 64 angas. Rather, he includes those items here saying that they may be favorable, but they are not really bhakti. They are not part of sadhana bhakti. So this week and next week, we will discuss about the angas, the limbs, which, are, which does not support bhakti, which are not part of sadhana bhakti, but, but they may support it. Right. <clears throat> so sadhana bhakti and karma those who are wise and have deep knowledge of bhakti do not accept practices of karma to be practices of sadhana bhakti activities aiming at material fruit are not part of sadhana bhakti karma is not bhakti karma if it is done for pleasing Krishna then because it is done for pleasing Krishna it becomes part of bhakti Karma can be whether, um, for example, if I am a housewife, then cooking. Is it cook? Is it bhakti? Yes, if, it, if you do it for, if you cook for Krishna, if you offer to Krishna, it becomes bhakti. But if it is not connected to Krishna, then karma is not part of bhakti. Some people say, you know, Bhagavad Gita says, just do your karma. Uh, um, well, Bhagavad Gita never says, just do your karma. Bhagavad Gita says, do your karma in thought of me. Bhagavad Gita is a book of is a book of bhakti. So those who are wise and have deep knowledge of bhakti do not accept practices of karma to be practices of sadhana bhakti. Something more, what makes what makes the two paths, karma and bhakti, different? In karma, the motivation of action is our one's own enjoyment or purification. Now, why we do karma? We may do karma for enjoyment. We may do karma for purification. An example of karma for enjoyment. Well, if I do this, then I will get this return in which I will leave the benefit. I can enjoy the, the results that come from my karma. So then let me do it. Either karma is done with the motivation of enjoyment or it is done for the purpose of purification. Example of karma for the purpose of purification. For example, it is 1 p.m. I am not hungry. My children are hungry. They are small. Um, my husband will come for lunch. Um, I have to cook now. But I have no mood of cooking now. I am too tired last night. I could not sleep. Um, still I get up. I peel the vegetables. I cook them. Spend one and a half, two hours. Quite an austerity. Now this time we are not cooking for enjoyment. Because there is no hunger. But we are purely doing it for the sake of my duty. It is my Vanasham Dharma. It is my Grihastha Dharma. I must do it. Now, that will help us become purified. Because uh, um, it is taking us one step. It is making us more selfless now. Karma, if it is done for one's own enjoyment, it's purely selfish by nature. But karma, which is duty, perform as a part of as an austerity maybe it's ought to be done it's my dharma then that is not bhakti but that will help us purify okay but the motivation in those is not connected to Krishna but when Krishna comes in the center then it becomes bhakti so the in karma the motivation of action is one's own enjoyment or purification in bhakti the motivation is krishna's enjoyment when one performs 
one's daily karmic duties with the aim to please Krishna in the mode of servitude, one is engaged in bhakti, specifically in karma arpanam dasya. We discussed sadhana bhakti, we discussed uh, nine limbs, we discussed dasya, dasya bhav. In dasya, we discussed two types, and one of them is karma arpanam dasya. Karma arpana. Karma arpana means I am doing my karma. It's part of my duty, but I'm offering the results for the pleasure of Krishna. I am doing it as a servant of Krishna. Um, one aspect may be um, um, maybe there is some karma that needs to be done, which we are not inclined to. It is part of our duty. Um, then Krishna, please help me. It's very difficult. Krishna, please give me strength so I can do this. Um, anywhere Krishna comes into picture. So for a devotee, it's natural Krishna will come into picture. But if we don't speak about devotees, if we just speak about karma, then karma is not sadhana bhakti. Um, okay, then this is also very important. This is from Uddhav Gita, Lord Krishna to Uddhav. Uh, Bhagavan Sri Krishna says, one should practice karma as long as one hasn't developed distaste for such things or faith in things like hearing about me. So how long should karma continue? This is very important principle for all of us practicing devotees. One should not give up one's karma unless one has become purified. Karma will help purify us. When karma is done, because there may be some attachments to the results, to this word, karma will help fulfill those attachments, but karma will also develop um, karma itself by doing it for the pleasure of Krishna. Natural distaste may come at some point of time as much as the taste for hearing about Krishna makes. Now, little more elaboration on this point. One aspect is we hear Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Sarva Dharma Parityaja Mame Kam Sharnam Raja Aham Tom Sarva Pape Bhyo Moksha Sami Masucha. Bhagavan Shri Krishna says, Abandon all your duties. Give up all your dharma. Sarva dharma parityaja. All your dharma, abandon. Just surrender on to me. Then the question means, can we do that? There is one example of one family, uh, Prabhu. He, he, he earlier, I think 2012, he was uh, uh, serving at uh, Detroit Temple. And he was very close to me also. He was married. He has children. So this Prabhu, he wanted to, he was taking guidance from his guest. You will be sure Prabhuji. So he wanted to give up his job. And he wanted to serve in the temple full time. So that's like abandoning karma. So then he asked Prabhuji that, can I give up my job? I want to serve Krishna full time. Prabhuji said, that's not a good idea. And then he went to his spiritual master, who was His Holiness Sadhana Swami Maharaj. He asked Maharaj, Maharaj, I want to give up my job. Um, and Maharaj said, it may not be a very good idea at this point of time. So, like if we hear from Raghunath Das Goswami's book, Mana Siksha, maybe after we may go to Mana Siksha if devotees want, we may again, I think some, many have not done, some may have done. It's very nice to hear Mana Siksha again and again, training of the mind. Um, uh, so the first verse of Manasiksha, Raghunath Das Goswami emphasizes that one should give up dharma. Na dharma, na dharma. Don't be attached to dharma or a dharma. Just surrender to Krishna. So the Bhakti Yudhan you know, Thakur says, you know, they, this is perfect statement. Sarva dharma palityaja, na dharma, na dharma. And we see that uh, um, even in uh, Krishna's pastimes, when Krishna played the flute, the gopis gave up their dharma to their husband, to the cows, to their children, and they went to please Krishna. So we see from scriptures, we see from Bhagavad Gita, we see from our, our predecessors' teachings, and Bhakti Ramana Thakur emphasized, but, and we see many Grahastha spiritual masters um, in Iskon, they are serving full-time. They are traveling, like there is Kritu Prabhu, there is Vaisheshika Prabhu, there is Kalakanta Prabhu, there are and there are many who are uh, um, now they live either in dham or they travel or they have become spiritual master. They are grihasthas, but then they are 
just depending on Krishna. Krishna maintains their families. They have family, they have children. Krishna maintains them. Um, Krishna always maintains so whoever takes shelter of him. Krishna maintains them and then they are just focusing on more and more full engagement devotional service. Now they are no more engaged in those activities which are required based on our Nashram Dharma. But they have rejected those activities for the sake of serving Krishna. So in general, the principle is what Lord Krishna says, unless we have become fully purified and our attraction shelter of Krishna has become very, very mature. Um, uh, when we have become free from material desires, till that time we should not give up our karma. Like very, very good example is Arjuna wanted to give up his own karma of fighting because part of Varnashram Dharma is a Chatriya Dharma to fight. Krishna told him, as a Chatriya, it's your duty to fight. If you give up your duty to fight, infamy will come to you. But then um, Krishna wanted him to fight for his pleasure. Krishna didn't want him to just fight because it's Chatriya Dharma, but you fight that you are doing it for my pleasure. And Krishna says, if you give up your uh, Chatriya Dharma of fighting, and then you don't fight, and then you renounce, then what can repression of modes accomplish? Whatever we are being impelled by the modes, whatever desires we have is based on mode of passion, mode of ignorance, mode of goodness. We cannot repress those modes. Even if we try artificially to give up whatever state we are in. In other words, for Arjuna, if he gives up the battlefield, thinking I'll become a Brahmana, then wherever he will go, his natural tendency to of fighting as a Chatriya Dharma will come back to him and he will again be inclined to fight. So whatever material desires we have, even if we renounce things, then those desires will come back. So that's why it's not recommended to artificially give up something because somebody else has given up. Now, Brahmachari life is different life because in Brahmachari life, one may not be purified. But still, one is giving up dharma to accept another dharma. For example, there is Chatriya dharma, there is Grihastha dharma, there is Brahmachari dharma. So Brahmachari life is not like they are free from material desires. And they have, no, they have different sets of duties. They have duties to their spiritual master, duties to the temple, duties to the society. They may have all those things, they have all those desires, but then they are keeping themselves engaged. In some way, following Brahmachari Dharma. Um, there is four ashram, Brahmacharya, Grihastha, Bana, Prasanyas. Whichever ashram we are in, whatever duties are assigned to us based on our ashram, whether Brahmachari, Grihastha, whether Brahmana or Kshatriya, we must perform those activities and gradually increase our attraction to hear about Krishna. As our attraction to Krishna matures, our material desires are nullified then we can then we don't have to think about then then we go to the next level of instruction which is reject dharma or reject karma okay any reflection on this on karma any discussion or any question or any reflection on this Oh, I didn't notice that my video is off. But anyways, anything devotees have on this topic? Okay. So now this is the first aspect, which is karma. Now, um, as we discussed, Rupa Goswami is describing in this 14th chapter the things that are not aspect of devotional service. One thing he said is karma. It is necessary to continue because if you artificially give it up, our activities will again be motivated by the same desires because we are under the control of the three modes of material nature. Once we become free from three modes, that is the time we can do whatever we like and totally depend upon Krishna. Probably you all will become gurus at that point of time when we become free from three modes of material nature. Now, next is knowledge and renunciation. So the question may be asked, is knowledge bhakti? The answer is no. Is renunciation bhakti? No. So, um, summary, bhakti will give rise to knowledge. Bhakti will give rise to renunciation. Knowledge and renunciation does not give rise to bhakti. 
Now, we will go through, there are many slides on knowledge and enunciation, and then we will summarize. Knowledge and detachment have some initial utility in the beginning of bhakti, but they certainly cannot be said to be the practice of sadhana bhakti. So, they are not sadhana bhakti, they are not part of sadhana bhakti, but they, they have initial utility. They are required in the beginning. But they certainly cannot be said to be the practices of sadhana bhakti. If somebody is renouncing, does not mean that he is performing bhakti. There are, there are many examples. Um, there is one example of in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastime, there was uh, Abrahmachari who would drink only milk. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was performing his um Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, along with his close associates, would dance whole night in the house of Srivas. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu one day was trying to absorb and dance um, uh, Kirtan Rasa with his intimate devotees. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was not feeling the ecstasy. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told devotees, I am not feeling the same like, like I feel every day. There is somebody in this house who should not be here. Because of there is some ill elements in the house, I am not able to absorb in my, in my own chanting, in my own kirtan. So, Shivas Thakur became scared. Shivas Thakur tried to justify himself. Shivas Thakur said, my lord, there are no atheists in the house. Um, there are no uh, karmi, karmis in the house. Um, there are no offenders in the house. Um, uh, there is just one very renounced brahmachari who drink only milk. Other than your pure devotees, your eternal associates, he is the only one in the house. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became angry. He told, bring that milk drinking brahmachari out. So he became very scared. He came out and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, what, do, what does he think? Does he think by renouncing and by drinking only milk? And by becoming Brahmacharya, will he become qualified to see my dancing? Will he become qualified to become an associate of mine? So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became angry and he said, it is not by drinking only milk and it is not by renunciation. Can one attain me? It is only by devotion. Can I be purchased? Now throw this milk drinking Brahmachari out. And this milk drinking Brahmachari, he was thinking, he he took a very humble position. He put his head down and he was going out. And, Chit, and this Brahmachari, he was thinking, how I am not qualified. I have no devotion for the Lord. See these devotees. Their heart is full of love for the Lord. Who am I? I am just a hard-hearted renounced. I am just a hard-hearted artificial. I am just a hard-hearted with the artificial show of, show of renunciation. I am not qualified. But Lord is so merciful that Lord allowed me to see his dance for a few moments. That is the inconceivable mercy. The Lord knows everything. The Lord knows that I was there from before even he came to this house to perform his pastimes. But he still acted as if he doesn't know and he let me see him. So he is Karuna Avatar. He has come as an ocean of mercy. To the completely unqualified soul, he gave a part of the mercy that I does not deserve. So when in a humble mood, he was thinking Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became very pleased. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, only by devotion can I be attained. Now this is devotion. Devotion means taking a humble position and gratitude for the Lord, even for the little that Lord has done for us. And not asking anything, not finding fault in Krishna, not finding fault in devotees of Krishna, but being grateful to whatever little Krishna has done for us. And that's sufficient for me. And I can live my life with that only. And when that perfect mood of devotion was seen by Lord Chaitanya being present in the heart, after saying, throw this milk drink brahmachari out, Mahaprabhu, after a few moments, he told this, Srivas, bring him back. Milding Brahmachari was actually qualified. That was his heart. His state of consciousness was devotion. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to show by his own example. Don't try to purchase the Lord by renunciation. So there are many examples that, um, that Mahaprabhu showed by his own example that uh, 
it is not that renunciation is not part of bhakti but renunciation will naturally come if you practice bhakti bhakti will bring renunciation naturally by being in the under the influence of the three modes of material nature we have many desires but then Sri Prabhupada would say the material desires will go down as our attraction to Krishna will increase. So we focus on developing our attraction towards Krishna by hearing about Krishna, by speaking about Krishna, by chanting Krishna's name, by participating in Krishna Kirtan as our attraction to Krishna, Krishna's lotus feet, Krishna's form, Krishna's qualities, Krishna's pastimes. As our attraction to Krishna increases, the material desires will simultaneously go down. So knowledge and detachment have some initial utility. Knowledge has some utility also. Because in the beginning, we need to know who am I? Oh, I am a spirit soul. Oh, who is Krishna? Oh, Krishna is supreme personality of God. Oh, I have a loving relationship with Krishna that I have forgotten. Oh, I have become consumed by the activities of this material world and I am chasing after fulfilling many material desires here. Oh, I need to reawaken my relationship with Krishna. Oh, I can be happy only with Krishna. Oh, the nature of this world is Dukhalyam Ashashvatam. This, this material world can never satisfy me. Even if I become the biggest businessman and the most richest person, the vacancy in my heart will not be filled by anything external. So what will, what will fill my heart? Only devotion. So we need that initial and that initial knowledge is needed. That's why Rupa Goswami says knowledge and detachment have some initial utility in the beginning of bhakti. We need some renunciation in the beginning because we need to give up our bad habits. We need to give up bad association. We need to give up bad eating habits. Like somebody who tries to join the ashram, we tell them, you know, you have to give up your relationship. Like especially Westerners, if they, you know, there are many illicit relationship people have, we tell them not to live in ashram, you have to give up your relationships. And then come just for three months, focus on your relationship with Krishna and then when you go back, then you can do whatever you like. But take these three months as an opportunity to deepen your relationship with God. Try to focus on only one thing. So it is required. Renunciation is required in the beginning. Because otherwise we'll be too distracted. And if we have committed sinful activities, then bhakti will never penetrate in our heart. So renunciation is an initial requirement. Knowledge is initial requirement. But somebody doing that is not part of bhakti. It's not a part of sadhana bhakti. Devotional service is dependent on nothing other than the sentiment or desire for such service. It requires nothing more than sincerity. One just has to be sincere. Sincere devotion service attitude, trying to please the Lord, progress. Um, we discuss five most important anga, association, chanting. Those are the main angas of bhakti. Why rejected by Rupa Goswami as part of sadhana bhakti? Why did Rupa Goswami reject knowledge and renunciation part of sadhana bhakti? These two usually cause a hard heart. Rupa Goswami says, if you renounce, 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 and there is no bhakti, then heart becomes heart becomes very hard. Artificial enunciation makes us hard-hearted. Why? Because uh, we don't we stop feeling. We kill emotions. We kill feelings. That's why dry enunciation is not recommended. Example: No sweets. No sweets. Sweet is there. No sweets. No sweets. No sweets. Mind is selling a little bit. No, 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 no. And then what happens? We are becoming very, very strong. We are becoming very, very harsh with our own mind, which is needed at certain point of time, especially sinful activities. But then if the focus is only on renunciation, then um, we become hard-hearted because, you know, the heart has some cravings in some form or another. But we are becoming very, very strict, very, very strict, very, very strict. And then um, um, it may make us a very kind of, um, yeah, not very happy within, kind of shallow, kind of. It will make our heart hard, hard. Now then, um, so I will tell because there are both aspects of it. It's a little complicated topic. One example is um, Radhisham Prabhu 
most of you know great great vaishnava he very strict with his devotional service very strict with his brahmacharya would not eat sweets then maharaj was serving prasadam in the brahmacharya ashram maharaj started maharaj told one brahmachari give him sweets because he is not eating sweets give him sweets but because it was guru's instruction radhe shyam prabhu took the sweets and he ate it another example legal kishore prabhu says he says like a dam and there is water coming and then you build a dam um then the water won't go but the water is collecting 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 because of the dam um, but there is no outflow but the water is collecting so the water pressure becomes so much the water can break the dam also so likewise um if we have become too hard with ourselves with the artificial enunciation then um, um um the force may become so strong that it can just break us apart um <clears throat> so artificial enunciation is not considered as part of bhakti <clears throat> but then there are four regulative principles and there are other things that we know is not conducive for my krishna consciousness one of the anga of sadhana bhakti giving up things not conducive for our bhakti but things that may be that's why rupa goswami introduces the principle of yukta vairagya things that may be used in krishna service can be employed um okay so these the these to usually cause a hard hard heart knowledge also if we become too much focus on um vedas upanishads and grabbing knowledge and reading a lot 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 i mean reading bhakti literature will help us grow in bhakti but something not related for gyan for intellect um, especially vedic vedas and other things um then again the heart may become hard so these to usually cause a hard heart then how do we understand the renunciation of raghunath das goswam who would drink only a cup a leaf cup of buttermilk how do we understand that when we can when we are, when we say don't even give up small things um strictly because that may make the heart hard what about him who has done so much austerity and such a renounced life so how do we reconcile those two principles so my my spiritual master says um it's like based on adhikar for example when we renounce something then we may renounce something for the sake of renouncing we may not renounce it for the sake of uh, uh, pleasing krishna but we may renounce not being krishna conscious but we may be focusing just on the act of renunciation das goswami was not focusing on renunciation das goswami was was focusing on oh this buttermilk my guru mara says oh this buttermilk i am um i am um wasting my time by drinking this buttermilk the time that i could engage in serving krishna here i am not getting krishna here i am feeling separation from krishna and i am thinking about my own enjoyment here um and so raguna das goswami would feel bad that he is taking time that should be serving krishna in his own sense gratification this is a stage my guru mara says you cannot mimic that stage but this is a stage of very deep devotion for krishna but in our stage we are not giving up some kind of renunciation thinking that uh, um or oh, this is taking my time away from krishna or my time should we are because our krishna consciousness status is not so high but we give up renunciation because oh others are not doing i should also not do this or uh, yeah i will not do this and i will say i don't do so people will know that see how austere i am so when the motive is anything other than bhakti when bhakti is not because bhakti will melt the heart constant bhakti will melt the heart when there is renunciation which is motivated by bhakti it will melt the heart but when there is dry renunciation it will make the heart hard so as a general principle it is mentioned focus on bhakti as the bhakti grows the renunciation will be natural natural renunciation and you give it up that's that's natural but then giving up artificially without a deep devotion and then just for the sake of austerity then that austerity itself will make the heart hard so these two usually cause a hard heart whereas bhakti usually results from a very soft gentle disposition of the heart bhakti means uh, 
very detail oriented um very much keenly observing bhakti means little reciprocation from devotees little reciprocation from krishna and there is gratitude even if no reciprocation from krishna you imagine some kind of reciprocation from krishna and you cry in gratitude bhakti means little bit somebody does and your heart becomes overwhelmed so bhakti manifest in a very soft heart it's like um, um, the symptoms of gratitude uh, feeling emotions like there is one story where uh, um, you may have heard one prabhu came to shila prabhupa telling my wife died and i don't feel anything for her so i think i am ready to take sanyas prabhupa said get married again prabhupa said if you cannot feel for your ex wife the wife who passed away if you cannot feel for her how can you feel for other living entities sanyas means you feel for all living entities you feel for krishna when you can't feel for the people whom you love what is the possibility of you feeling with other for others when our heart heart is hard we cannot feel others pain that heart is very selfish by nature it it's focused on what am i going to get it's not focused on by in the in the lieu in the in the force of fulfilling my own desire my own desires what is that what effect that has on others doesn't matter i am the center my work is done that's all that matters heart hard heart dry knowledge dry renunciation without bhakti renouncing for the sake of renouncing renouncing not for the pleasure of krishna like my spiritual master says to the ekadashi devotees if they fast that's excellent but my guru maharaj also says that fasting on ekadashi and ego is feasting i am fasting why and because everybody knows that i fast on ekadashi now so i must fast on ekadashi uh, because otherwise what will people say others are fasting it doesn't look good so when the motivation is anything other than um i am fasting because i want pure devotion i am fasting i want to please krishna i want to cause suffering to myself why i want to cause suffering because i am such a wretched soul i want to cause suffering for myself because when will krishna give me his mercy when the motivation of renunciation is bhakti it is bhakti then it is recommended it is very important for devotees to have a renounced life renounced life means not being attached to the object of sense gratification it is highly recommended but when the motivation is bhakti but dry renunciation and that renunciation naturally comes by the force of krishna bhakti and that is basically a renunciation arising as a child of bhakti because suppose our force to grow in krishna consciousness so much and we are not getting that then we are doing austerity because we want krishna's attention like there is an example of aindra prabhu he fasted for 7 days he said unless krishna reveals to me who i am in the spiritual world i am not going to eat i'll better die but then his 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 renunciation his austerity was not coming out of any other purpose other than i want krishna's mercy i want krishna to bestow his causeless mercy on me i am not qualified still i want krishna's mercy when the focus is bhakti when that action is taken by the motivation of bhakti when the strength of bhakti is is bringing renunciation great please do it but when it is dry artificial external factors it will make your heart hard same as knowledge so this is from bhagavata bhagavata also says vasudeva uh, bhagavati bhakti yoga prayojita janayati ashu vairagyam gyanam chaya dahitukam that if you perform vasudeva bhakti then janayati ashu vairagyam gyanam chaya dahitukam you will get causeless knowledge and renunciation immediately anga of bhakti they come from sadhana bhakti so they are not itself sadhana bhakti sadhana bhakti will give rise to those and when they come it's excellent okay so certainly knowledge and detachment are not usually beneficial to a yogi endowed with love for me and absorbed in me this is krishna telling to uddhav that they are not usually beneficial 
especially one who is love me and absorb for me artificially again actually krishna conscious devotional service itself is the only way of advancing in devotional service devotional service absolute it is both the cause and effect devotional service is sufficient devotional service will these these are children of bhakti they will come automatically with bhakti they doing those itself is not bhakti okay so how are we doing with renunciation knowledge are they anga of bhakti if not why they are not anga of bhakti what is artificial renunciation knowledge what is genuine renunciation when renunciation is favorable and when it is not favorable uh, how are we doing with these principles Okay, is it clear? So Hare Krishna Prabhu, just one minute now, able to understand. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, so this is something on that. It continues. Knowledge and renunciation. That which comes from karma, from austerity, from knowledge and detachment, from yoga, from charity, from religion, from other auspicious means. my devotee easily obtains all these from my loving service so this is the last slide we will cover even if he or she somehow desires heaven liberation or my abode he or she gets it once again that which comes from karma from austerity from knowledge and detachment from yoga from charity from religion and from other auspicious means my devotee easily obtains all these from my loving servants which in other words these things are not required other than loving service in other words if you do if you render loving service to krishna you will get the result that comes from karma what is the result that comes from karma purification comes sense gratification comes both bhakti will provide It is said, "Akama sarva kama va moksha kama udaradi tibre na bhakti yoga na yajate purusham param." Whether you have desires or you don't have material desires, anything you want, bhakti will give you. Krishna says, "Yoga shema bahami aham." I carry what you lack. If you depend upon me, I carry what you lack. I preserve what you have. Anything needed for you, Krishna will provide. There is a you know I, I said before also Gorka Patro mentioned that while he was chanting he was thinking about something to eat and somebody brought that to him and he thought you know I should not use Hare Krishna Mahamantra to desire any Adman Bhakti because Nama Chinta Mani Krishna Chaitanya Dasavi Graha Purna Shuddha Nitya Mukta Ben Natam Nama Nama Na the holy name is Nama Chinta Mani fulfill all your desires any material desires you have holy name will fulfill it. that's why there is no there is this is these are not the angas of bhakti purification holy name obviously cheto darpana marjanam holy name so whatever is the effect of karma holy name will give you whatever is the effect from austerities actually the purpose of austerity as per bhagavad gita is knowledge tapasya austerity krishna says the biggest tapasya or the biggest sacrifice krishna says to approach a spiritual master and learn knowledge from him <clears throat> but whatever you want other things that we may get from austerity is uh, like i'll give you one example of austerity that prabhupada says prabhupada says uh, austerity is very much needed in human form of life human form of life should not be used like cats and dogs for sense gratification human life should be used for self realization and the purpose of austerity in human form of life is to please krishna and then prabhupad paused and then prabhupad said waking up early in the morning 4 am is very important it's a tapasya coming from mangalarati is an austerity must be performed human life is meant for austerities and then prabhupad again paused and he said today i saw in a temple i was i think i was hearing this lecture yesterday Prabhupada said today I saw in a temple 
and there was one brahmachari who was sleeping and did not come for mangal arati so i went to him and i told him that uh, this temple life ashram living is for austerity and if you cannot practice then you should live outside anybody living in the temple should come for mangal arati should not be used as an ordinary living space so there Prabhupada was emphasizing on tapasya must be rendered but austerity for us like there is you know some people do austerity for other reasons for material benefits some politicians do certain austerities to fulfill their demands so this is all you know not you know um anyways in motivated by material desires so austerity is important but if you are performing bhakti bhakti force itself will give us austerity also actually um i'll give you one example today mangal arati here i am in radha gobindavala mandir today today mangal arati there were like uh, maybe 40 40 50 devotees today very nice mangal arati so uh, why did they come purushottam mante kadashi so let's go some of you may be there i am not sure so let us go for mangal arati there so there the motivation is not that uh, uh, i need to do some tapasya but today is Ekadashi and it's very auspicious and I must use this day in remembering Krishna more and more. Let me go for Mangal Arati. Purushottam month comes only. So this is something, the austerity arising from Bhakti. So when Bhakti itself will bring all the Angas of austerity. Initially austerity is helpful, but that austerity is motivated by Bhakti alone. I must go, get up, go for Mangal Arati. When austerity is centered around Bhakti, great. Then from knowledge and detachment that we discussed from yoga, ultimately the goal of yoga is to develop relationship with Paramatma, which comes by bhakti anyways. From charity, from religion, from many other auspicious means. Purpose of charity is also actually renunciation. Uh, we become detached. Um, when we give, um, our attachment weakens. But bhakti itself will bring um, detachment. So these these are not angal bhakti. Somebody giving more charity is not necessary. That uh, it's a part of sadhana bhakti. Rupa Goswami does not say specifically, but he does mention if it is done to propagate Krishna consciousness and blessings come, and then that blessings will help us grow. But otherwise, any results obtained by any of these things not centered on Krishna, he will get all those results just by performing bhakti. Then the last line, even if he or she somehow desires heaven, liberation, or my abode, he or she gets it. Bhakti will fulfill all desires. Even if you want heaven or you want liberation, impersonal liberation, nobody should desire those. They are very much condemned by devotees. But this particular verse says, even if you have a material desire, bhakti itself will fulfill. So just focus on bhakti. Don't focus on karma, don't focus on yoga, don't focus on charity, don't focus on austerity, don't focus on renunciation, don't focus on knowledge. Just focus on bhakti. Bhakti means association, Srimad Bhagavatam, chanting, deity worship, and uh, uh, take care of Tulasi. Then the last, last paragraph. This reference substantiates that the fruits of knowledge and detachment come automatically from bhakti. As such, there is no need to specifically practice cultivation of knowledge and detachment. So this is from Bhagavatam, 11th canto. There is also reference in 1st canto. This is from Krishna telling that by, these are byproducts of bhakti. They are not angas of bhakti. So, okay. Uh, that's all for today. If there is any discussion, we take now. Otherwise, we resume more on this next week. Hare Krishna Prabhuji Dandot Pranam. Srinivas Hare Krishna. Yeah, thanks for the explanation, Prabhuji. I mean, I was not aware of this point that um, uh, renunciation out of, uh, without bhakti, I mean, the difference, renunciation focusing on bhakti. Uh, I, I, mm -hmm. I could analyze that difference now, actually. I never thought of this. I mean, for example, we do Ekadasis uh, li living on in garlic as a matter of renunciation. But if we do these things out of bhakti, we don't have to, uh, I mean, 
that's not that difficult if we focus on the bhakti part alone mm. that that part I, i am understanding today i understood that today okay thank you thank Prabhuji. you okay so uh, thank you all for joining we'll end here vansha kalpa tanu bhasha kripa sindhu me evacha patita naam pavane bhyo vaishna vebhyo namo namo anant koti vaishna vinda ki jay shri ram namo Then we're going to have to give my time to Sarah Krishna. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prabhuji. 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 Thank you, Prabhuji.